everybody welcome to another genie vlogger live stream on today's live stream we're going to be building a descendants tree for benjamin franklin welcome everybody hopefully you're having a wonderful friday already i've been having a busy friday running around doing errands my dogs are not happy about it especially that after finally coming back home i'm not playing with them right now so they you might hear some whining and such in the background but deal with it little boys um hopefully everyone's doing all right uh let's do our typical and go through uh all the wonderful hellos from everybody uh good day how we got here genealogy with brian nash wonderful to have you brian as always leslie coming in from santa cruz california we have michael clark part of our london representation wonderful having you here michael uh julie russell coming in from fort bragg california hello julie thank you for joining us rosie hello stig hello one of our scandinavian representation from oslo norway uh, and then for those who don't know, but Brian Nash is from Canada, Prince Edward's Island. Um, we also have Bear Var from Zurich. Welcome, Bear Var. And Stephen Millsap, wonderful to have you. Good day, my friend, from a 60-plus degree day in North Dakota. Dare I say it's sweltering. Gee, 60-plus degrees is... Well, I guess it's how many pluses, <laughs> but if it's only a few, 60 is great. Um, I've said it before, but thank you for all the learning we get to do from you. Do you still have your band? Well, I really appreciate those words. I'm glad that you uh, you enjoy what uh, you learned from me. Um, I do not have my band uh, anymore. I do uh, talk with a few of my old bandmates. Um, I still jam on my guitar a bit here and there and I was actually been I've been talking about setting up the drums in my basement again. I just have to clear stuff out and then get it set up. But I'm so busy with so much else. It kind of always falls to the side. But yeah, I love music. That's for sure. Uh, Bear Var. Anyone else noticed a little? I'm guessing you meant Jarrett, not Gerard, but a head popping up in different places on the screen. I don't know that you might you might be crazy. You might have been imagining it. I don't know. Did anyone else see those? <laughs> uh hello santiago from buenos aires we have a malay fan in here viva la libertad carajo um well wonderful to have you on here uh nick hudnaven from Groningen. uh good hudnaven uh wonderful to have you always love having uh my my netherlander my netherlanders in here the dutchies uh, we've got Sean coming in from Ireland. Wonderful to have you, Sean. Uh, another face I recognize. One that actually has a face because you have it in your profile photo. So <laughs> one of the few we can see. Uh, Stephen, hello, international peeps. I wanted to visit all your countries and hope I can someday soon. Yeah, uh, I, I do have to say one, one of the things that I find so cool about uh, the streams that I've done, even though we don't necessarily have a huge audience, um, we have a very wide range of representation across the world. So it's so cool. Uh, Charlie, evening. Wonderful to have you, Charlie. Our, our wonderful admin mod, Charlie. Uh, which, by the way, always a good reminder when I see Charlie in here, definitely check out the Genie Vlogger Discord. Uh, join the community. Uh, you can be involved, get help with your own genealogy, help others. And then just a lot of just kind of fun, random conversation about other stuff, too. Uh, Sharon Phillips coming in from New York. Wonderful to have you, Sharon. Uh, Maven too, doing things backwards today. Uh, what do you, oh, you mean the descent? Yeah, we're not going up. We're going down. Yeah. I was actually thinking about that for a bit because it's like, you know, when I think of videos where they talk about famous people's family trees, they usually talk about the ancestors, you know, not everyone, but and I thought, well, this would be a great way to talk about descendancy research and not getting into living profiles and stuff. So, yeah. Um, Daniel M., actually on time for once, evening from Bristol, UK. Wonderful to have you, Daniel. Um, Alexandra from Koblenz, Germany. Wonderful to have you, as always, Alexandra. Uh, ergo some Victoria from Wolver Vol Wolverhampton, UK. I was trying to pronounce it with my Dutch pronunciation. I've been trying to learn Dutch. So it was like, I was thinking Volver, <laughs> Wolverhampton, UK. Uh, Bernard Davis, what is the best DNA site to use? Um, honestly, in my opinion, and this opinion is geared very much towards genealogy, my best DNA test video, which you can go and watch, 
a little outdated now, even though it, it hasn't been that long ago. Uh, so I, I need to do an update. Uh, but my heritage would be my my option. But that's strictly in a genealogy sense. So the tools that they have available, the uh, shared match page, the you know all the different things, not the admixture part. Because I know my heritage is one of the ones that the admixture is the theirs is the the least reliable from what most people find. Well, no, I shouldn't say it like that. Not the least reliable. Theirs is the one that I find the most people saying it doesn't match up with what their family tree should be. Um, but even with that, oh sorry, what's going on here? That should be better. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Uh, but basically, my heritage is the best test if you want to actually build your family tree, and find matches and all of that stuff, um, especially in the tools they have available. The next best site is GEDmatch. The only reason GEDmatch isn't technically better than my heritage is because you can't actually test with GEDmatch technically. And I guess technically a few other reasons too. You know, they don't have as large of a database and things like that. But my heritage, absolutely amazing. But their admixture, not as much. <laughs> uh, hola, Gazillion PT coming in from Portugal. Trasos Montes. No clue if I said that correctly if, at all, but feel free to, to correct me. Um, and then, oh, but uh, so you're saying what is the best DNA site to use for African American genealogy? Now, with the African American part added in, really wouldn't change my answer much at all. Um, you know, depending on if you're looking for certain things, you know, I don't, you know, that may vary what suggested, you know, if you're looking at a purely paternal line, maybe that would be best, but yeah. All right. Uh, Daniel M 60 plus degrees in sensible countries is death. Well, I guess, I guess, yeah. If you're talking about 60 plus Celsius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Matt, uh, fast from sweden wonderful to have you we've got a lot of the scandinavian representation in here today evan Selp, hi jared i hope you're doing well saw your cameo on dime store adventures contest yeah that one was a while ago and that actually i was a little disappointed that i my video was so low grade <laughs> because i was like it was i forgot what was going on but i had tons of stuff going on and i told him i would do it and then he messaged me like hey i really only have this much time left are you going to be able to do it? And I was like, Oh yeah, let me, you know, does, what do you need in terms of quality and stuff? And he was like, doesn't matter. Just get me something. So I was like, put on my MacBook webcam. I didn't have a good webcam at the time because I didn't have my set, my studio set up downstairs. Um, so I did that really quick and it was like, you know, I, it was cool that, uh, that, uh, I did so well, I'm not going to give it away, uh, how well I did. Everyone should go watch that video. It was a, great video with uh, a lot of uh history tubers uh basically looking at random newspaper articles that dime store adventures had picked out and uh guessing what year they were from um yeah so very very fun video thank you evan for being here wonderful to have you um daniel oh yeah <laughs> all this talk about the 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 weather uh we have enabled disabled coming in from stockholm sweden wonderful to have you um, and then Eric Kidder, can you do Busby quintuplets family tree? No clue who that is, but you know, I'm always, uh, open to suggestions. So maybe that that's a possibility in the future. Uh, gazillion PT from my experience, both my heritage and ancestry DNA make very nonsensical suggestions of possible matches between our tree and other trees. I guess, is that more referring to like through lines and the theory of relativity, which is understandable that they would come to nonsensical suggestions because those rely on the family trees built by others. So like in my experience with through lines and theory of relativity, if somebody's built a family tree that has incorrect information in it, but it somehow is connected to your family tree, they're going to use that to come up with their theory of things and it can make things really wrong. Um, it's, it's one of the big downsides to it. And my, my heritage does have it where with their theory of relativity, you can at least, I, if I remember correctly, you can say, yeah, yes, this looks right. Or no, this looks way wrong or uh, something like that. But 
yeah, it's it's I don't know, but I'll, I'll keep a lookout and see if uh, you clarify if that's what you meant. Um, Jums, I did ancestry tests and upload the raw heritage to my uh, or raw data to my heritage, waiting for those results to compare it. Yeah, and uh, some other places you can upload it to family tree DNA, jedmatch.com. Um, and as well, once you upload it to family tree DNA, you can then propagate it to genie.com. So if you have a thing in genie.com, you can go and do all of that stuff. Um, and then you said, I just, I heard my heritage is not good for Hispanics. Well, depends on what you mean. If you're talking about those admixture percentages, the ethnicity percentages, maybe it, you know, but in terms of building your family tree, like if you're trying to do the DNA test to get matches to then help you expand your family tree, it actually, my heritage can be really good and sometimes even better than a lot of the other sites. Uh, because they have a lot more testers from a lot of, uh, honestly, Latin American countries. So if you're talking Hispanic specifically, like not La not Latin, but not Latin American really, but like Hispanic is in like from Spain and Portugal sort of thing. Um, I'm not quite sure, but I know that I've seen more matches from Spain and Portugal in my heritage than I think anywhere else. And that's one of the big things with my heritage is that they do have the most international d database of testers while they may not have the largest database overall that international part of it makes them stand out greatly um ancestry obviously having the biggest database for matches um okay so gazillion no i post exact birth date plus place marriage death some ancestors and they suggest a possible match but that person was born on the wrong side of the world I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not, I, I'm still not a hundred percent sure what you're talking about. Cause you're, are you just saying that like matches that you can't place and how they're related, like DNA matches? I don't know. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. We, we don't need to harp on that. We should probably focus on uh, what we came here to focus on. And that's the Benjamin Franklin descendancy stuff. So uh, with the, the 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 idea of today, there's a few things to it. One is that this I chose Benjamin Franklin because he was the winner of Mr. Beat's March Madness Most uh, Significant American. Or hold on, I I always have to go and like read <laughs> read exactly how he put it. Um, let's see. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Beats March Madness Historically Significant Americans Edition. That's what it is. Okay. So basically, Benjamin Franklin was voted as the most historically significant American. Um, so after seeing that, it was like, well, I should build this tree. And then I was thinking, well, you know, ancestral research, I've been doing a lot of that in a lot of these uh, family tree building um, live streams. And then I was thinking, you know, it'd actually be pretty good to do descendancy research because it is similar but slightly different to ancestral research and at the same time i could do that with this tree and not be worried about you know going a couple of generations and then getting into parts where it's like oh maybe maybe i shouldn't be showing that on a live stream or pulling that kind of stuff up and you know doxing benjamin franklin's living descendants sort of thing you know and take it'll take me a, a lot more than you know two or three generations to get there so um before i jumped into this obviously you know i figured out you know i took a look at his family tree i've never really researched any of the founding fathers family trees before or really looked into that kind of stuff you know so I really had no idea about Benjamin Franklin's descendants or anything like that. And I learned he had three children, uh, one son, William Franklin, who was from a woman that is unidentified, but from what I could see was considered low class, but was still raised by Benjamin Franklin and his wife, Deborah. And then they had two children together, Francis, who died at four years old. And then Sarah, who then went on to marry uh, some guy that was important in American history, but I guess we'll get into that as we do the research. Um, but one of the things I did before I jumped into it is I checked genie.com to see what they had going on with it. 
and so this is the the genie tree um so we have benjamin franklin and ju just to give you an idea for those who are kind of genie nerds this is what i have the tree set to zero uh, just one generation on ancestors two on descendants and then obviously direct ancestors only one downside with direct ancestors only is if you do it and somebody is married but didn't have children they won't sometimes show up in the the tree view for some reason so uh, let's see what's chat saying check chat uh, oh interesting franklin's daughter married the brother of my ancestor okay so that would be richard bach okay bach actually wait did i have blanche for some reason i remember blanche <laughs> maybe i'm thinking of something else so okay so you're you're from the bach family very cool so that means that all of uh sarah bach all of her kids are your cousins uh daniel which in portuguese given the low low name diversity everyone in their dog has the same name Oh, I you might be talking to someone else about it. Oh, Karma, good to have you here. Coming in from Nebraska. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So I took a quick look just to get an idea of what we were working with. You know, basically, did Benjamin Franklin's children have a lot of children? Or like what seems to be the case here, did they only have one child? Uh, so William Franklin, Colonel Governor of New Jersey, and then his son, William Temple Franklin and all of that. Um, so, yeah. So one thing I should say, too, and I guess this is kind of a response to a comment I saw on Facebook, which actually the person who did this comment actually had a, a kind of infamous comment in my live streams because it got me some hate from the Taylor Swift uh, live stream, if anyone remembers that. Uh, but he was kind of talking, he was saying, you know, oh, somebody's already done this. And I think he was talking about the guy that wrote the book on Benjamin Franklin's family. And it's like, yeah, every tree that I'm going to be building is going to be family tree, or not every tree, but most of the trees I'm building for like celebrities and famous people, those trees are probably already built. The basic idea of this is just, a fun way of showing how to do genealogy research and exploring available records and just kind of sparking discussions about genealogy related stuff. So it's like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to expect to find some sort of groundbreaking thing that no one's ever found before today. Uh, I just expect to use this as a fun way to show how to do this sort of research. So uh, with that, I do want to talk about a research method that I've utilized in descendancy research that I think I've coined the term because I haven't seen this anywhere. And I've talked about this a couple of times. And I, I often say that, you know, I, I think I've coined the term because I, I kind of want the credit, <laughs> you know, trying to be humble. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, but anyway, the idea is it's called sweeping the branches. So basically, when you're doing descendancy research, things can get really big really quickly. I mean, look at this. We go from, you know, okay, we have the three siblings, Francis, Sarah, and William. And then one has no children, but then Sarah has all of these children. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine children. And then William has one. So we've gone from three we're researching to 10 and then we're probably it's going to increase and increase and so it can get overwhelming in how you're going to do that so just to give an example we're looking at two generations of descendants now let's up it to three and see how much bigger the family tree gets and so you know it just kind of gives you an idea of like oh wow things can really get out of hand really quickly so it's like all of a sudden okay well this child he had one two three four children they had two. They had two. Oh, actually, they had two with one wife and then three with another wife. And then she had a whole bunch of kids. And then he had a whole bunch of kids. And, you know, so it can get overwhelming. So the idea of sweeping the branches is basically an organizational tool, in a sense, 
so that you don't miss anything because sometimes people will kind of hop around, you know, they'll go to the, you know, Oh, who's really interesting looking to research into and this one and that one and this one. And they may end up accidentally skipping over Benjamin Bach and not researching him enough. And then it turns out that that's where, you know, you would have found some sort of interesting thing or depending on what you're trying to research, maybe that's where you were trying, you know, that's where the connection that you were looking for really was. It's easy to skip over. So to sweep the branches, the idea is you're going from left to right in the family tree, researching every family, building each generation down. So, you know, using using this tree, we start with Francis. Well, there's no children, so it's easy. So we move on to Sarah. So then we go to Sarah. We're going to add in all of her children. And then once we've basically figured, okay, we've identified all the children that we seem seemingly can at this point. Then we move on to the next one. We identify them. Then once we've identified everyone in the next generation, we move back all the way over. So, you know, in here, like if we were all the way down here, we'd move all the way back down over here. We figure out all of Dr. Franklin box children, figured all that out. Okay. Benjamin <clears throat> figured all that out. Then, um, brevet brigadier general Hartman Bach and then Richard. And then, so, so it's just a moving left, right. And really what it is in most family software programs, the oldest child will be all the way on the left. So you're kind of researching from the oldest to the youngest, which also is very useful because when you're looking at the oldest child, then it can help you confirm things as you go further. Cause you know, if you're looking at a child in the 1910 census, then you're looking for that same family in the 1920 census and you see that same child in there along with all of the other children. It's just a quick confirmation that yes, you are on the right path because it's a correlation between the two. So that's kind of what the whole idea is with sweeping the branches. <clears throat> so we're going to do that now with Sarah, Sally Franklin, and we're going to do this. I'm going to do it kind of in a quick and dirty method. In a sense, we're not going to go crazy uh, about going into the records, although we will dive into some of them. Um, <clears throat> and one of those being these, the Sons of the American Revolution membership applications. And so uh, the Sons of the American Revolution is this group of people that are male descendants of revolutionary ancestors. So to join, you have to prove it genealogically. And this group has been around for many, many years. And so here we have an application for Clarence Kilker Young, a descendant of Benjamin Franklin. And then we can see this is from 1949. So this is, this is their application for the Sons of the American Revolution. Now this ties really well into the whole thing with Mr. Beat, because when I did the Mr. Beat uh, um, episodes on uh, YouTuber family tree series that I do, I did a whole episode about uh, the American Revolution and we talked about the Sons of the American Revolution and the Daughters of the American Revolution and used both of those to talk about different sides of Mr. Beat's family. Um, and I, if I remember correctly, we used the Sons of the American Revolution stuff to talk about his Struble line, which is the line that connects him to the Eisenhowers. So all very, very interesting. But so this this is a, just a really interesting record that... Um, you know, you can kind of see the research and stuff. So it shows, you know, Clarence Kelker Young, 35 years old, descendant of Benjamin Franklin, and then all of this other information about him. And then, you know, okay, I, and then how do they descend? I am the son of Clarence Kelker Young, this, uh, you know, born this and died this. And his wife, so-and-so, grandson of these people. So he's going up the line where it traces. So here, Francis Cook Hindmarsh is where it connects. So then it goes up to them. Then great grandparents, second greats, third greats, fourth greats, fifth great. And then that's the Benjamin Franklin Deborah Reed. So it's giving us a whole line of the family down. And so um, it also gives kind of their description of uh, his service during the war which I think it'd be kind of hard to argue that Benjamin Franklin <laughs> didn't do anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, so just kind of a fun, fun thing to just show really quickly. So we'll get that added in real quick. 
bippity boppity boop. So now obviously we're only looking at one child in here. Um, but now this is something that a lot of people will probably find if they have uh, colonial or uh, American revolutionary ancestry is this North America family histories, 1500 to 2000 series, which is basically a whole bunch of books that um, are about, uh, you know, that are related to this North America family histories, 1500 to 2000. And we can see that this one that we're looking at, this is the daughters of the American revolution lineage book from NSDAR. So um, DAR being the daughters of the American revolution, uh, not a hundred percent sure what the NS part stands for, but then volume 99, 1913. So this is basically based on the records from the daughters of the American revolution. This is, how it is and then they have all of this uh information which i think i skipped the page so let's go back to it oh we were on the right page so okay yeah so we have miss Mar marie bach fine born in bristol pa wife of william park fine descendant of benjamin franklin as follows and yeah all this stuff so all right let's get this out of there And oh, it's just giving us one child. Oh, interest good call. National Society Daughters of the American Revolution. There you go. That it has gone. So All right, now I'm going to cheat a little bit. <laughs> We're going to do it really quick and dirty. I was kind of hoping to find a uh, find a grave or something, but it's just not going to happen. So we're just going to use GenieNet, GenieNet being the French site. And we're just going to get all of that added in. Benjamin Franklin... I feel like we saw that differently. All right, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Just going to worry about adding in all these kids, then cleaning it up a bit. All right, we're just trusting that Genie Net's correct right now. This is, I will say, I do not suggest people do this necessarily uh, in their own research. I'm kind of just doing this for the sake of time in the live stream. Uh, <laughs> but I'm also basically, I'm kind of doing a little, little bit of a cheat code sort of thing going in here. Um, Or I'm going to use Genie <laughs> as my re kind of a reference. Good old Genie.com. So, okay. Oh, I just realized this is all too small. I hope that was somewhat legible for everybody, but hopefully this is a lot better now. I'm not contributing to it because this tree is private and I'm if anyone watches this they will see me saying this as I do it. So but we're also going to go through and clean up. So we are going to it's not going to be 100% dirty because we're going to go through each one of these and kind of just double check stuff. Um I I'm really surprised that I didn't just find a find a grave record. That's yeah, there we go. So just kind of jumping over to the final grave. I'm surprised it didn't uh 
didn't have it in there. So, all right. We'll get all this added in. Definitely trust a gravestone on the death date more. At least I assume that's where they're getting that information. Oh, yeah, what is... Some of these names are a little cockeyed. Yeah, Find a Grave gets messed up with famous people being hints because really old famous pages on Find a Grave had the names entered different. That and there, all, there being almost one thousand Benjamin Franklin pages. Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that was a, a serious issue on Find a Grave. I mean, I obviously know about some other issues on Find a Grave, but. It certainly makes sense, and it's one of the big reasons why I think the whole idea with Genie was really, you know, our collaborative trees in general was a big thing is because of that issue of, like, you know, you look at thousands of trees with Benjamin Franklin, whereas you go to Genie.com and there's – you're going to probably find multiple Benjamin Franklins that are this Benjamin Franklin that just haven't been merged in yet, but basically, you know, tons are merged, and you can always tell that because as soon as you look at the profile, you look at all the managers – and basically, you know, 74 different people managing this. <laughs> you know, 74 different people. Basically meaning 74 people added Benjamin Franklin into the tree and then it was merged into this one profile. So in a sense, this profile is like 74 different Benjamin Franklins merged into one. Which really sounds like some sort of Rick and Morty type of thing. <laughs> but yeah, so... That's kind of a big thing with that. And such. So, all right. Interesting. U.S. Oyer and Terminer Court Papers. Let's take a look at this. At a court of Oyer and Terminer and General... Coal delivery? I don't think that... No, that's... Maybe it is cold delivery. Gal delivery? I don't know. Held at Philadelphia for the county of Philadelphia. Um, something 24th day of September on the day. Yeah. <laughs> In the year of the Lord, 1,774. Continued by adjournment to the 26th day of that same month. Present, the Honorable Benjamin... Chu, Chief Justice, John Lawrence, and then Thomas Willing, the justices, the sheriff to wit, William Dewing, Dewey, it having interred the precept to him directed in all things, duly executed the following persons were sworn and affirmated or wait we're sworn and affirmed a grand inquest these uh and then there's there's bach botch the king indictment for burglary Interesting. Boyer and Terminer. I honestly don't know what that is. <clears throat> Boyer and Terminer.
Court of Warrior Terminer. In 1788, the justices were required to convene criminal courts during the terms of the circuit court. The Court of Oyer and Terminer consisted of a Supreme Court justice and two more judges of the Court of Common Pleas with jurisdiction to hear all felony cases, including those punishable by life imprisonment or death. Under the Constitution of 1821, circuit court judges presided in the courts of Oyer and Terminer outside of New York City and had jurisdiction to try indictments found by a grand jury. The court of Oyer and Terminer was abolished by the Constitution of 1895 and its jurisdiction was transferred to the New York Supreme Court. Interesting. This is the fun part of genealogy. You know, you kind of just find these records and stuff and it's like, oh, what's the background of this? Um, well, we can take a look at a 1790 census. So very, very different from <laughs> what we're mostly used to in the 1900s, even into the 1800s. Um, let's see, where is Bach? There we go. So he's living in this household. And then let's see, one and five. All right, one, zero, five, zero, zero. Uh, let's see, does it? Oh, okay, yeah. Free white male person, 16 and over, free white. Persons, females, five. Okay. Living in Water Street, East Side, Philadelphia. So, all right. All right. So let's go through. So we're going to do. William Franklin's. Let's see, we're going to do a serious cheat code. All right, I'm going to have to add more information. It's just not picking up on him yet. All right, let's... Uh, it's interesting. So what's the deal here? So... He was born from an illegitimate mother, and then he had a son with an illegitimate mother. The illegitimate and only son of William Franklin, notably illegitimate as well, who sired him while a law student in London. His mother is unknown, and the infant was placed in foster care. His father, William, was the illegitimate, but acknowledged son. Yeah. All right, well then. It's so interesting sometimes how that stuff can be generational. It's like, you know, he was that, and then his son was that. Why is it so out of... Oh, it's like, why is it so out of focus? Because it's zoomed in. <laughs> All right, William Temple Franklin. So we'll just add in spouse unknown. Actually, we'll do it this way. Temple Franklin, 1762 to about 18. All right, let's see if that changes anything. Yes, it does. There we go. There it goes. Go ahead and get a photo added in of him. Then we have all sorts of stuff. Let's see what records we can find on him. Um, actually, oh, wait, no, I'm getting distracted. Okay, let's go back to the kind of focus. All right, so we've built this stuff out now, and now we're going to sweep the branch again. So we've done the first sweep. We've gotten the children of this generation. Now we're going to figure out their spouses and children. So I guess I was on the right path, but now we're just going to kind of focus on his kids. 
and being born in 1762. Um, you know, we're basically looking at, yeah, and dies 1823. So we're going to be looking at a variety of stuff. Interesting. So we have marriage in France, 1823. In England to something of the United States, to a line of the United States. Hmm. Ambassador, maybe some sort of shortened version of that. I don't know, but interesting. Okay. Let's see. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so that is marriage, 1823, and then dies later that same month. Okay, now did he die in Boston or did he die in Paris? Certainly would make more sense that he dies in Paris than Boston. He just got married there. Grandson of Dr. Benjamin, editor of his works at Paris, May 25th, 1823. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> This in, although we, <laughs> I I don't know if he had any children with her. Take a let's take a look. We can actually. Okay, so he had one child, Ellen. At least according to well, in find a grave. Shouldn't jump to conclusions, people. Do not jump to conclusions. So, okay, yeah. So we have Theodore and Ellen. And then they don't have any other spouses listed. At least this Hannah Collier. All right, so Helena Franklin. So we'll at least get her added in. Now, this is going to make her the daughter of Hannah, which can't be correct. In fact, who is her mom? Ellen Johnson to Evelyn Temple. All right, let's see. How's that coming out? Yeah, see. Ellen. Ellen, Ellen, Ellen. Um, yeah, we'll just do it like that. Add spouse, Ellen Johnson. Do we have any? No. All right. Oakley Doakley. So there we go. And then for Theodore, he dies at only a year old. Hmm. 
from birth document for Theodore, illegitimate son. Wow, just illegitimate son, illegitimate son, illegitimate son. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, it really just it just like turned into like that was the thing. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll have an illegitimate son. I'll have an illegitimate son. I'll have an illegitimate son. All right. Um, so all right. I'm not gonna focus on adding in Theodore. Yeah, all right, you know what? Let's just go ahead and add him in. I need to stop talking so much. Whoops. Oh, maybe I can just add it like this. Why Mary Franklin? Are they just mixing her up with other Franklins? I keep seeing this Elizabeth, but. Huh, do they have that many children? If so, why does Jeannie not have any of that? I don't think they did have that many children. Let's take a look at these people's these records. Okay. Right, this is the one we know should be correct. This one should be Johnson. Oh, wait, no. Let's put the uh well right off the bat. I mean 1841. 1841. I don't think I don't know if this is right. Let's just <laughs> let's do a serious cheat code. Let's just Google it. <laughs> William Temple Franklin. Uh, I mean, it just for the children, it just lists Theodore and Ellen Franklin Hanbury. Wow, the line ends there. Okay, interesting. All right. Okay, well. Let's go back. So this line basically ends after Helen, Ellen. So yeah, with Maria. So shame. But okay, so the idea is sweeping the branches though. Let's keep going. So now we're going to go from left to right here and get all of the children. And he's born 1769, dies 1798. So he may not have had any children. Here's a will. Uh, 
Okay. Image courtesy of City of Philadelphia Register of Will Office. Well, there we go. Benjamin Franklin Bach of the City of Philadelphia and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Seeing the calamity with which this city is now deplorably vert. Oh, wait. Deplorably vested. And being uncertain how long I may escape the general affliction, resolve while in possession of the powers of my mind, I considering the necessity of quartering as much as in me lies against any evil consequences that might result to my family by a want of attention to my affairs in such a crisis do make this instrument as my true and only last will and testament directing and declaring that the following disposition of my worldly affairs is the only one which shall be made. Very cool. Badass. <laughs> um, I think, is this? Yeah. Benjamin Franklin Bach. Sworn the 13th day of November, 1798. Interesting. I don't know. Maybe it was a yellow fever epidemic. It's kind of funny, though, because knowing what's going on in Philadelphia now in certain areas with all the drugs and stuff, it kind of, <laughs> this part, with which this city is now deplorably vested and being uncertain how long I may escape the general affliction. But, yeah, I mean, kind of different, but very interesting. Um, all right. Uh, so we're trying to get his children, which, interestingly enough, then, Let's see. Let's go to parents and then going over to Sarah. So, and then he, he dies. Oh yeah. Well, wait. Oh, under the sedition act of 1798, he was arrested for his comments of the government and president while reigning trial. He came down with yellow fever dying in se September, 1798. Wait. Okay. Signature of this seventh day of September, seventeen ninety eight, and he dies three days later. So three days after doing this, he dies. Um, let's see. Oh, wait, no. Benjamin Franklin. Whoops. There we go. Interesting. Wait, so it's all over the place. Death, September 10th. Death, September 8th. So, I don't know, interesting. Decline. All right. All 
right. They had children. All right, we know it's Margaret. Let's get her added in. A little bit more of a cheat code. <laughs> so four children. Franklin, Richard, Benjamin, Hartman. All right. I'm going to go with this one. Oh, Dr. Franklin Franklin. I hate that all those extra Franklins got in there. <laughs> Sounds kind of funny. Now, this is some interesting stuff that I, I figured I'd pull up. Um, so what I've done is I, I'm at the uh, Library of Congress website, www.loc.gov. Great website for genealogy research if you've never used it, especially well, for American genealogy research. You know, for those of us who are in America, drinking our Mountain Dew and slamming Domino's pizza and Popeye's chicken. Well, I'm in North Carolina, so Bojangles Chicken. It's on, son. All right. <laughs> um, I didn't know the, uh, that they had their own uh, blog. Illustrations from Poor Richard's Almanac. Yeah, that's out of focus. That's still pretty cool. I'm sure we can pull up the actual one on here. Um, Benjamin Franklin papers. Now, when I, when I do my like YouTuber family trees stuff and I try to come up with the story stuff, and the narrative, this is where it really, like, you really start to pull a lot of stuff out. Obviously, with Benjamin Franklin, you know, I mean, I'm like, you know, one of, uh, you know, after a th thousands of people who've probably already researched and gone through all this stuff and all of that. Uh, but it's just, you know, it's like, I, I guess that's kind of one of the fun things with some of the work I do is I'm, you know, when you're building out trees then and building these stories and biographies and narratives of, people that don't have the focus like the Franklin family do. Um, you know, it's just, it's just really cool being able to kind of pull that stuff out. So <laughs> I'm sipping some Swedish whiskey here. Good to hear. Good to hear. Why not Chick-fil-A? Well, funny enough, I actually had Chick-fil-A uh, today. The, I had a uh, coupon for a free chicken sandwich. So I went and got that, <laughs> but um yeah i mean chick-fil-a is completely different though i mean chick-fil-a is chicken sandwiches and chicken nuggets and stuff and you know popeyes and bogey that's that's fried chicken you know it's a whole different that's a whole different thing so we are eternal band i'm related to benjamin franklin very cool do you know uh do you know how you're uh related are you descended or are you related? So 
obviously related, there's a billion ways you could be, but if descended, we already know it has to be through Sarah Franklin. So. All right, so we have the four children. Benjamin dies 1798. We know we saw that it said four children. Pretty confident that this is what we have. So now we'll move on to William Franklin Bach. Bosch. Bach. Now he lives to 1820. So we do see him coming up in some of the um, you know, later census records, you know, 1800, 1810. Or, or not later, but you know, as it starts to as, as the federal census starts to get a bit more orderly, I guess you could say, in a sense. So it's still doing it instead of the way they did it, you know, like mid 1800s and later into the 1900s, where it's like it lists every single person. Instead, they're doing it by household, so they have the head of house, and then they're listing, you know, each person based on you know, free person or not free person and their age and that sort of stuff. So you can see here, you know, this is the household. We've got free white person male through 10 through 15. And yeah. So fortunately, while it can be useful genealogically, it's not quite as useful because you don't get the actual names. And that's really, uh, that's really what we want. But here, oh, these are good ones. The New Jersey U.S. Church and Town Records. So it looks like this is a baptism. Yeah, baptism. So let's see, baptism. Or gay. Or who? All right. Let's see what uh, what does Jeannie have to say about this uh, this line. We're going to make uh, Sarah our focus. Okay, so Dr. William Franklin Bach has a few. Now, this is, that'll be interesting once we get down there. Civil War Union. Dr. Franklin Bach. Pictures from afar, but it kind of <laughs> looks like if uh, you mixed Abraham Lincoln with uh, Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> All right close that out so let's see William Bach let's double check what's the Catherine Bach what do we just add in Catherine uh, that North American family histories again At the Rin. So the two daughters, Emma and Sarah. No Emma there. The 
but there is a Benjamin Franklin. Right, that's some not easy to read handwriting, but it is the will, and it says lists three children. So presumably this other Benjamin. So let's see, we'd be looking for Sarah, Emma, and Benjamin Franklin, Bach. Page five. You know, let's uh, try to find this well instead of looking. Seem lots of people that have snapshots of this will. All right, let's see what see if anyone's attached it in genie by chance. Nope. All right. Let's take a look again at what they say. So Sarah Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, and Catherine Wister. Sarah? So then who's this Emma? Oh, she dies. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can add it in from here then. We're going to do find a grave. Connect all the kids to it. So far. Okay. And then we've got um i think it's the same application that we were looking at before so this is the line that this person who applied this clarence kelker young this is that line through which they uh descend so benjamin franklin deborah reed richard bach and sarah franklin william bach and Catherine wister and then through benjamin franklin bach Thank you. 
right. Oakley Dookley. So then we've got that. <laughs> Clean it up a bit. Okay, just over an hour. All right, so so this is the I know I keep hitting on it for those who uh, have been jumping in and out or maybe came a little bit later. The basic idea of what I'm doing right now is tracing the descendancy of Benjamin Franklin using what I call the sweeping method. So the sweeping method being that you're going from left to right, identifying all of the children of each person. And as soon as you've identified what you believe is all of the children, you move on to the next one. So first we did, you know, all of these generation got them in there. Now we're going through the next generation. So we had Ellen Hanbury, which we know she had a daughter, but that daughter is going to be the last of her generation. Then we have over here, we have these four sons of Benjamin Bach. Then we just found the four children of William F. Bach. And then we're going to move on to the other one. So Sarah F. obviously dies it. Uh, not even a year old at, uh, gosh, what would that be? I guess that's what, eight months old, nine months old. Yeah, I guess nine months. Um, so not going to have kids, but Elizabeth Franklin Harwood obviously does. It's added in from find a grave, which has the married name. So we already know that her husband's married name is going to be Harwood. There it is. And let's see. Why is she just going by Franklin instead of Bach? Here we go. We'll use this. <laughs> we'll use this one as the... So this seems to be a different line of the family. Through which someone applied. So, kind of clean all that up, makes it easier for the AI part of Ancestry to figure out the hints. So, we've got the one. Church of England. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, they got married in Germantown. That's where my dad grew up. Do we have her death? Yes, we do. That A.A. A. Harwood, who we already have, Andrew... What does Jeannie say? <laughs> Harwood. Mm. Admiral Andrew A. R. Harwood. Uh -huh. and there are others. Many who died young. Typical of the time. Um, I think this is a death record for Andrew. And oh no, this is a yeah. Death record for Andrew. Let's see, does it give more than just the one child? Nope.
Oh, I get it. Okay. Yeah, this is telling the ancestry, not the descendancy. All right. Well, do a little cheat. <laughs> a little cheat. A little cheat. Thomas Sargent married 1812. Fits with John dying young. All right. All right, we're going to uh, we'll go with this guy. I usually only like to do one at a time when I do this because ancestry system gets a little funky when you Try to use multiple family trees at once. And if it doesn't correlate the people well enough between one tree to the other because of variations of names or incorrect dates or whatever it may be, it gets really, really annoying because you have all of these duplications that you have to go back and forth and scroll up and down and just double check. You know, is that right? Is it wrong? What's the deal? Right. <laughs> Richard Franklin Bach Jr. to that that's like two different people. What is what are they thinking? Not a match. Franklin 1784. There we go. Okay, so that's why I guess someone seems to be wrong. That information is very different than what we have. <laughs> wow, a lot of contradictions going on. See, this is why uh, you got to be careful when adding this stuff in. So I don't know when is the right one. Eighteen sixty three, eighteen sixty three. Okay, so what they have is incorrect. We're not going to add that Richard Bach in. Get that one. Then Sarah Franklin, 1800 to 18. Sander. We're in 1806, so much later. All right, some of this stuff's getting a little wacky over here. All right, so they're actually right on this one, and I was wrong apparently. There we go. Oof. Huh. Let it think, I guess, at this point. <laughs> oh, I see some uh, some people jumping in a little, little later. Good to have you. I know you're jumping a little late, but hey, 
still jumping in. Good to see you. And for those who've been here, if you're enjoying this, definitely uh, hit that thumbs up. Give me that like. That's uh, super helpful. And also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, definitely subscribe. And if you didn't know that I have a reaction channel, Professional Genealogist Reacts, I'm still surprised at how many people I'll hear from that'll be like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you had a second channel. If you didn't know, now you know. <laughs> But I feel like a lot of you know, though, because I'm doing the streams on both and I see a lot of the same names on both streams. All right. So I think we've got all of the kids added in. Definitely dealing some with dealing with some wacky stuff going on in this tree. Not well, not necessarily the tree as much as other people's trees. So Thomas Sargent. All right, so moving on, Lewis F. Lewis Franklin. Bah. Sons of the American Revolution. Charles Lewis Bach. Let's save that. Then let's look at this uh, Episcopal Diocese of Pennsylvania church records. We got this baptism. So. Oh, yeah, I guess looking at the date, knowing what date we're looking for, October or December 20th, 1779. Seventeen seventy nine. What would that be? To be a hundred and seventy years exactly before my dad was born on the same day. <laughs> it is not in any order. I thought it would be. Oh, of course, this is the born. I was looking at the baptism. One's born October seventh. October 7th. There we go. Lewis, son of Richard and Sarah. Right there. Right there. Then we'll will and probate. That was a lot of stuff. Oh, it's not going to let us add it all in. I never understood that with some of these records like this one. Like, you know, a lot of records we've seen, we click yes, and then it gives us the option to add in the kids, add in the wife, all that. It's obviously distinguishing them, but then it's not letting you do it. And I can understand that, you know, maybe some of these natural son, natural daughter, as opposed to these, were they not his natural? Look at this bull. Let's look at this thing. I, Lewis Bach of the borough of Bristol in the county of Bucks in the state of Pennsylvania. Being of sound and disposing mind. Natural equals illegitimate. The... I would think it'd be the other way around. My natural born children, usually, in my understanding, natural born children would be, you know, these are the children that were. Oh, it is a child born out of wedlock. Okay, yeah. Natural child. That's so funny. I guess natural child is just a term that's just not used as much because I was kind of thinking, like, oh, natural child, like, uh, 
you know, my naturally born. But I guess, yeah, interesting. So, yeah. So, very common thing in the Franklin family, apparently. Among my children. All right. Now, do we have something we can at least line this up <laughs> right, well, we can add in this part hey giving us one child yeah give us that one kid we just have to go back and add mary swift for the other for uh, the the other Lewis Bach, add in his mother, Swift. Quick edit that thing, Malay. We got two more children added in. Oh, that's interesting. Obit image. I think that's kind of jumping ahead a bit, but I think that's fine. I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and add that in. All right. But the main thing I was actually thinking of is, um, Okay, yeah, he's definitely. Let's see, Marianne's. Because his father dies 1819, but the mother, when did she die? Oh, she dies 1812? Ooh, 1788 newspaper. Yeah. Hmm. Where is okay? So this is a uh a little bit, but I'm trying to see Miss Ann Swift. Okay. Yeah, seventeen seventy-eight newspapers. There were basically like three pages or two pages. There we go. Yeah. I don't know how much better that is necessarily. Pennsylvania packet and daily advertiser. I was, it's so fun being able to kind of read these newspapers and stuff and just, you know, just kind of thinking about, you know, the people that were reading this. When it came out, the people that made it, all that stuff. So, got all your typical stuff, your ads, and all that. An elegant seven eight blooded mare, five years old this spring, warranted found and free from any known vice, stands for sale at the Indian King in Market. Uh, something. Her price is thirty. Guineas Could not be Gillian's water. Oh, 30 Guinness water, which well, yeah. or 30 gallons water. Hmm. Oh, that's cool. For Amsterdam, the ship Amsterdam packet. Actually, let me zoom in for you all the. The ship Amsterdam packet. William Campbell, commander, laying at Gerard's Wharf, will fall in three weeks for freight or package apply to the commander on board or to Duncan Ingram. So if you got to send letters out or things like that. So cool.
<laughs> this. It's just so interesting to me, like the the ads and stuff too. Signor Falcon. Ooh, tough received a fresh supply of Connecticut cheese. Of the best quality and for sale at John D. Blanchard's store in the third street between Chestnut and Market Street. Philadelphia. All right. <laughs> So very cool. All right, let's take a look. How long have I been going? Well, I've been going for about an hour and a half. All right. All right. So I was kind of hoping, you know, get your kids. Did I already add the find a grave? Oh yeah, find a grave added in. But did I get their find a grave? It's a shame we can't add in siblings from here. We can only add in kids. Well, and spouses too. All right. We'll add them in by hand. Because there's not many. Basically, Margaret Lott and Elizabeth... Harward Burnett. Eighteen oh three, eighteen seventy one. Elizabeth Harwood. You know, seven eighteen thirty seven. All right. Oof. <laughs> so, as we can see, just reiterating again, the sweeping method left or you know, it it's just a good, easy way to kind of just keep things organized and make it easy at least for me, um, and especially when you're working on collaborative stuff. So let's say, you know, I was working on this with a couple of other researchers and it was kind of done in a way of, you know, okay, well, let's just try to all research and build out as much as we possibly can. Well, it's usually best not to, you know, overstep things or just, you know, I don't know, just kind of picking up where somebody left off in a sense. Um, can make it easier because then it's like, you know, you just keep adding stuff. So if you were doing collaborative, people would be able to quickly tell like, okay, we were over here. We built all the way out over here. And now we have to figure out the siblings for these four. Um, and that's where doing tags can be helpful too. So let's say, you know, okay, well, we want to make sure that, you know, let's say there was no marriage and there was no children well, you know, never married, no children. And then if someone goes to start adding stuff in, they can see, oh, there are tags. Because as soon as you click, my tree tags. Obviously, you can take those off. Take them out. All right. So we got Tenant Lewis Franklin Bach. Oh, 
we don't have a spouse listed there. So we're going to... Now, was there a known spouse? I guess that's a question. Wait a second. <laughs> Same guy. I was about to say, I was like, what's going on here? All right, well, that's all. <laughs> it's like, wait, we've already done Lewis Bach. Oof. Add in some more North America family history records. Death and burial in Philadelphia about 1863. Ah, okay. So we've got the uh, indexation from back when they did typing. Why am I missing it? Where? Oh, okay. There we go. So February 13th, 1863. Oh, the burial was February 13th, 1863. So we'll just make that February. Oh, ha, 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 ha. And here we've got a record coming from the NEHGS register, the New England Historical and Genealogical Society register. So Deborah Duane, Philadelphia, PA. 81, wife of Honorable William J. Duane and at Chelton Hills, Montgomery County, PA, on the 6th of October, 1863, her sister Sarah, widow of Honorable Thomas Sargent, aged 75 years. Both of these ladies were granddaughters of Benjamin Franklin. Mrs. S. was the last surviving grandchild of that distinguished man. Very interesting. See tabular degree, register 833. The 374. Honorable Thomas Sargent was an honorary member of the New England Historical and Genealogical Society. See obituary notice, register 929. Wait, no, X. What is X? X is. Uh, uh, wait, I'm messing up on my Roman numerals. Okay, X is 10. That's right. C is 100. So it would be 9. We know XIV. XIV would be 14. Aha. Okay. Figured it out. It took me a second. <laughs> it took me a second. All right. But just kind of cool. Just kind of cool. Um, what do we have for her kids? Elizabeth? Mm -mm. Oh, what it is, pup. What it is. What's up? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah, come here. Come up here. Who wants to come up here? Who wants to come up here? Who wants to come up here? Come on. 
<laughs> you don't want to, or you do. What do you want to do, baby boy? Come here. Come here. Or don't. Jack? Jackie boy. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. I guess I kind of am, but still. <laughs> still, Jack, what are you doing, dude? Come here. Or don't. I don't know what you want. I don't know what you want. You're a nutcase. You're a little nutcase, dog. I don't know if you can hear the jingle jangles of their little collars. What's up, Petey Poops? What's up, little dude? What? You come up here? You need a woman? You gonna come up here? You gonna come up here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting attacked. I'm getting attacked. <laughs> there we go. Hey, everybody. Here's Pete. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Lazy boys. Uh, that's probably where I need to take a little bit of a break from uh, the family tree building for a second. Yeah. He's a little lazy dog. Like, he just loves to lie like this. This is just, you know, <laughs> I'm, his, I'm his bed. He just comes up here, he lies down like this. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Little leg. So, <laughs> and then Jack's running off somewhere, somewhere. Wait, on, Peter. What? What is that? What could all that be? What could it be? You, dog. You are. Okay, good to know. <laughs> Uh, okay, so William John Dwayne. That guy looks like he's from the 1800s or something. that in there we go there we go all right now my dog jack is crying like crazy right, go down pup yeah, good dog good little boy so yeah just under two hours <laughs> not too shabby and the views are going down anyway so Probably a good time for me to go ahead and call it. I think we did a pretty good job uh, just kind of randomly building stuff out, looking at different stuff, uh, different records available, and just, you know, I don't know, just kind of chill, fun, whatever, genealogy, just just working to build stuff out. So it's, a, it's actually kind of not a bad practice, too, to just kind of work on this stuff and you know even though it's been built out a billion times just can be good so there we go that's the that's the big old tree try to make as much of it fit with it being kind of as legible as possible that's about as close as i'll get um but yeah i think that's gonna be it for today thank you everybody for uh joining if you uh you've been around for the whole time. I really do appreciate that. But thank you anyone who was uh, hopping in. If you haven't, give this a uh, thumbs up, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, I mentioned this in my stream earlier this week, but I'm no longer going to be doing two streams a week. I'll be doing one stream a week. So instead of, you know, you know, genie vlogger one every Friday and the reaction one every Tuesday, I think I'm going to just do one every Friday It'll just be varying. So one week it'll be like this, a Genie Vlogger main channel react, uh, stream. And then the other week it'll be the reaction answering questions one. So kind of get both in 
and uh, you know, not spread myself too thin and hopefully start getting more of these main channel videos out too, because I really need to do that. But um, you all have a wonderful Friday, have a wonderful weekend, and um, uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing you all next week. So I'm out.